Well, hello everybody. Scott Derrick with Blythewood Bee Company. I hope you are having a great day. Happy New Year to you. Uh, it is 2019 now. We had a fresh brand new year. Uh, it is January the 4th right now and uh, we are looking forward to a great 2019. Um, today's program uh, is brought to you by the Bee Bar Feeder Lid. Uh, the Bee Bar Feeder Lid is a plastic, heavy duty plastic, BPA free, dishwasher safe, feeder lid for your feeder jars. They fit uh, small mouth jars, uh, mason jars, and things of that nature that can uh, be a benefit to you. No more rusty, stuck lids on your jars. Uh, the V-Bar lid is a fantastic uh, product. I've done a video on it. I'll actually put it in the description below for you, and you can check it out. Also, a link to our website to where you can actually purchase it if you would like. So thank you, B-Bar, for, uh, for sponsoring this video. Hey, today I want to talk to you about hive beetles, the small hive beetle, and about its effect on uh, your bees as well as uh, ways to prevent them and also uh, how to deal with them once you do have them in your hive. Uh, before I do that, hey, remember to subscribe and like our videos. We're giving away a deluxe beginner beekeeping kit uh, when we hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you'd like to be included in that giveaway all you have to do is subscribe to our channel that's it uh, once we hit a thousand we're going to choose someone uh, that has subscribed to our channel and we're going to give you a five hundred dollar deluxe beginner beekeeping kit absolutely free no charge there's nothing uh, that you have to do in order to be able to win this we're going to ship it to you and it's going to show up at your door and you're going to be happy this spring i'm hoping it'll be this spring but when we are actually able to get it done we have around 230 some odd subscribers right now so we got a little road to go but hopefully that'll uh, that'll that'll go pretty quickly um hey uh, the hive beetle uh, is something that we're all struggling with as hobbyist beekeepers the majority of us commercial guys not so much because they actually uh, move their hives around quite a bit. Um, but the, 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 the hive beetle, the small hive beetle, actually hails from uh, southern Africa. And it has been a problem uh, for the United States since 1996, when we actually re realized that we had them here in the United States. You guys know that we are importers and we are consumers as a nation. So we actually brought these things over uh, and when we were doing some importing. Uh, of, of bees probably into the United States more than likely or queens or something. For some, some reason or another it happened. Uh, but we got them in here and they have, uh, they basically uh, scattered all around the United States, all around the world really in most countries. Uh, you're, you can find them. I think there are a few exceptions to the rule. And there are some exceptions in the United States too where some people don't have any problems with them. But for the most part I think uh, that a lot of people are, are dealing with these things. These, these things are scavengers, and as scavengers, they can cause a lot of problems for your hive. Um, they become an epidemic in the United States, a real problem, and uh, there are ways to combat these things, and I'm hoping to be able to help you with a little bit of that today. A female beetle lays an irregular mass of eggs and cracks and crevices in your hive, uh, and it's a tremendous amount of eggs that they lay, and so the population grows really fast. Uh, the eggs hatch in about two to three days uh, once they're laid and they start to uh, pupate. Now, they start to grow and these, these larvae are, are typically a white color. They're a little bit less than a half inch long and uh, they're very destructive to your hive. And what happens, they start to burrow and tunnel through the wax and they start uh, defecating uh, wherever it is that they uh, crawl through. And that uh, excrement that they, uh, that they uh, excrete causes uh, fermentation of the honey and of anything that's in the hive. And it, and it really causes it to be no good. You can't use it. And it can also uh, cause bees to uh, abscond. So, uh, and it's a real problem. It, and they feed on the pollen, they feed on the honey, uh, and, it, and it just damages, uh, damages the hive. Uh, the larvae are, are ready to leave uh, the hive and pupate into the soil of, of the hive right out in front of the hive after a few weeks. Now, what they do is that they actually burrow into the ground. It takes them about three to four weeks to, to, to become mature uh, to where they uh, can go back into the hive again and start the whole cycle uh, over again, which is just, just a horrible thing. Uh, the females generally mate uh, and, and lay eggs about a week after they emerge. So, like I said, the turnaround time is really fast. 
and they, uh, they start to really cause problems quickly and can start the damage really, really quickly. They will uh, usually have about four to five generations of beetles in a season. Uh, inside of your hive. Uh, so you've got to get on top of that as fast as you possibly can. And there are ways to be able to do that, uh, to be able to def defeat their, uh, to, to be able to defeat their cycle. Now, um, some of the damage that they cause, like I said, is discoloration of the honey. It causes a foaming effect to the honey. So once you have hive beetles, how are you going to deal with them? And, and how do you prevent them? Well, I want to show you a little bit about how to do that right now. Um, one of the products that I like to utilize is a, a product that was created by Clark Taplin. Uh, it is called the Beetle Blocker Shin. And the way that this works is this actually sits on top of your bottom board, okay? And everything else that you have goes on top. Your deeps, your mediums, uh, and your honey supers actually go on top of this. Now, the way that this works is the hive beetles will actually come into the front of your hive. Uh, I suggest keeping your hive down to the very smallest entrance. That's, that's what I like to do, especially during time of year when hive beetles are prolific. Um, and then what happens is that once they make it inside, if they make it inside, they're met with this shim. They're met with the very bottom of this shim. Now what happens is that they'll try to fly up and try to make it into the hive, and they, they have to hit one of these six holes. And if they hit one of these six holes, guess what? They've hit the lottery. So, um, but, but most of the time they're not going to be able to hit, hit one of those holes. So they get frustrated and they get up on the inside and try to crawl on the inside of this panel. Well, this panel is coated with a really slick product um, that makes it difficult for the hive beetle to grasp onto it. So what they'll do is if, if they can grasp on it, they will crawl over to where you see these ridges, see those ridges right there. All right, and they will try to, to make that turn on that ridge, that, that convex turn, and they can't make it because their bodies are too stiff, okay? So they'll crawl up on, the, on that convex turn, try to turn, and they fall right back down onto the bottom board, which is a, which is a wonderful thing. So um, anyway, uh, that's the way that this works. Now, again, you've got to keep your entrance reducer down to the very smallest entrance. You've got to make sure that if you've got any cracks in your bottom, uh, or in any of your boxes at all that you patch those cracks up, again, especially during high beetle season, which in South Carolina is around June, July time frame. And you also want to make sure that if you have an inner cover, some of, some of our inner covers actually have a notch cut out up top. A lot of people like to use that for ventilation. Also, they like to use it for a top entrance for your honeybees. I don't like that, and the reason being is because hive beetles can get up into that entrance, and they can also get down inside. Now, if you've got an inner cover that is cut that way, what I suggest doing is putting some screen over that, that hole uh, that is usually typically in, a, in a, an inner cover, and what that does is it still allows ventilation but keeps the beetles from being able to get down inside of it. So this is the beetle blocker shim. I love it. It works. I've sold many, many of these, and people rave over it, uh, that it works and keeps the beetles out rather than allowing them to come in. Now, once they uh, make it into your hive, if they do make it into your hive, you want to use a couple products that we have. Um, there are more on the market, but this is just what we have. This is actually called a Better Beetle Blaster, okay? This Better, Be Better Beetle Blaster, say that three times really fast, actually goes in between the frames of your, 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 uh, your hive, okay? Um, you're going to want to use, I use, I basically tell people to use two in each box and count, uh, put, uh, put it in counter corners. So you've got one in this corner, one in that corner. And as you move down your stack, you want to alternate, all right, down to the next one and alternate. <clears throat> but what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, high beetle trap oil and you're going to uh, put it into your beetle, uh, better beetle blaster. You don't want to fill this up 100%. And the reason being is because sometimes you'll jar it. Uh, and if you jar it and the, and the, the uh, uh, oil actually falls down into the hives and coats your bees, that's not a good thing. And you definitely don't want to harm your queen, have a chance of harming your queen or any of your bees. So I suggest putting it about halfway maybe a little bit more than halfway. And what happens is that the bees will actually harass the beetles uh, to the point to where they will go down inside of those little holes right there. You see those little holes uh, on the better beetle blaster. They'll go down inside of that and they fall into the oil and it kills them. These are disposable, they're great to use, and uh, they're not too terribly expensive. They come in like packs of 10. Uh, you can buy singles, but they come in strips of 10 uh, and they're great to use. Um, and they're, like I said, they are disposable. This is a product called the uh, Beetle Jail, all right? Uh, the Beetle Jail uh, is also a, a great product that we sell that, that actually has an opening 
uh, in two compartments for your, uh, for your beetle trap oil, all right? But it also has another compartment uh, that is to be used for bait, uh, for putting uh, bait inside there to, to lure the beetles in. Now, I don't like using any kind of a bait inside of my beetle trap. And the reason being is because I don't know how well these things can smell. And if we've got screen bottom boards and things of that nature and we're ventilating our hives, I don't want beetles attracted into the hive by putting some sort of a bait in here. So I do not recommend putting a bait in there. Um, and you close that back up. It has two slits in the top. You hang it on your frame, similar to that. And then, you, uh, like I said, the beetles will be harassed into those two little strips. They'll fall into the oil and it'll kill them. Uh, these are easily opened and easily uh, cleaned. Uh, and reusable, and that's one of the good uh, things about this, one of the benefits to using these, uh, this product right here, uh, and I do like this as well. So the last product I want to talk to you about is the Beetle Barn. Beetle Barn has a clamshell design to it, which allows you to load uh, whatever type of product you want to load in here in order to be able to kill the beetles that, that actually climb in here. This actually has four entrances all the way around. Um, you would put whatever you want to put on the inside of this. Some people will put Crisco and boric acid. Uh, I've seen people actually put a little chunk of check mite in the middle of it uh, and close it up and, and slide it on their bottom board or on top of their frames. Uh, and what happens is that once you close it up, the beetles are harassed again by the bees into these little entrances, okay? And they actually touch the, the, the check mite, which is a, a pesticide that's been approved for beehives and it will kill them. Um, I'm not exactly sure how long it takes to kill them, but it'll get rid of them. And so this is a real efficient trap as well. You can use these. We sell them single. We sell them in 25 packs um, in various ways. And so there's a lot of people that actually use these. I will warn you, however, there are people on the internet that are uh, using pesticides in here that are not approved for beekeeping and I'm against that. So I say don't use those products in there because some of these products such as Fipronil have been shown to cause extraordinary mortality in honeybees. So I definitely do not uh, suggest using that in any way, shape or form. Just don't use it uh, in your hive. It's not, it's not good for the bees. It's not gonna be good for you. Yeah, you're gonna kill some, some hive beetles, but trust me, you're threatening your bees uh, when you use this stuff. So don't use it, all right? So that's basically it. Um, thank you for tuning in to our channel. Hey, don't forget, if this video has helped you, uh, please subscribe and like and share it out with your friends. Don't forget that we're giving away a, a $500 uh, deluxe beginner beekeeping kit for all of our, uh, to, to one lucky subscriber uh, of the first thousand subscribers that we get. Once we hit that number, we're gonna choose somebody and guess what, it's gonna show up at your door, hopefully uh, before spring. Uh, so that you can truly, truly enjoy it. So anyway, thank you so much for your support of Blythewood Bee Company. If we can ever help you, please don't hesitate to call us at 803-754-7577 right here in, in uh, Blythewood, South Carolina, and keep on beekeeping.